How you doing, Coach Dorsey? All right. How are you, Pat? All right. I had a question. Uh, can you just talk a little bit about the emergence of James Cook and how much he has improved during the course of the season? Because, you know, towards the beginning, it seemed like he was up a little too high, hitting the holes, not letting the plays develop. But it seems now he is really starting to have a very good feel of how the pro game is played, especially from the running back position. Yeah, I think he's just gotten more and more comfortable as the season's gone, and and he's gotten that experience in those reps, and and then um, you know obviously with the uh, uh, the trade earlier in the year that gives him more opportunities. So I think um, it's a combination of a lot of things, and a combination of him you know working hard and, and putting himself in position to be out there more because we trust him, and um, that's from a pass protection standpoint to a run game standpoint to a uh, being out route standpoint. So I think he's done a really good job. Uh, with that to, to earn not only our trust, but the, the guys, all, all the guys on offense. And, and uh, you just see, I think you're exactly right. I think he's just become more and more comfortable as the year's gone on. All right. Thanks for the question and uh, luck to you on Sunday against the Miami Dolphins. Thank you. Mute. There we go. Good, good afternoon, uh, uh, Coach Dorsey. George Radney, Challenger Community News. How are you doing this afternoon? Good. How are you? Pretty good. Doing all right. And uh, my question for you today, on the running backs, I noticed uh, from the stats, uh, James Cook was averaging over five yards of carry in, in the game, and, and Devin Singletary was also actually averaging over 4.1 yards of carry. Is there any time during games when you see numbers getting that kind of high that you may say may change the game plan a little bit and run the ball a little more when you can see these? Because it looked like James Cook was really feeling it, man. He was he, he's really now starting to bust into those holes, uh, accelerate at the point of uh, at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I think uh, I think throughout the game, we're obviously, you know, we're always trying to stay balanced. We're trying to stay in, uh, you know, positive, positive yard situation on first down and, and uh you know, keep us, uh, um, keep us in, you know, first, second down production is, is obviously huge for us. So however we're going to get that done, we're going to try to get that done. Um, obviously I think for us, things got a little skewed as, as, uh, you know, we lost a couple of possessions there on some big plays on, on special teams. So I think that, mm -hmm. that does skew things a little bit, but, uh, you know, obviously our, our goal is to always, you know, um, attack a defense by, by being multiple, uh, in both the run and pass game. Yeah, and so obviously it, it dictates the game where you have the lead, for example, uh, with a Dolphin team that's very susceptible to the run. Is that into consideration as part of your uh, game planning? Uh, talking about this week? This week, yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously I think uh, we'll, we always kind of go about looking at things and, and, and really try to attack a defense in, in multiple ways, run and pass game-wise. So – um, you know, obviously we're always going to try to try to look at those things and make sure we're doing the best things for our offense. Uh, these guys are, you know, I think not, not too bad against the run. I think they're, they're actually, you know, they do a pretty good job. So, um, you know, you've got to, you've really got to be on top of things because they, they, they really, uh, present problems with the multiplicity that they, they have up front. And then obviously the guys they've got up front, I mean, they're, they're front, uh, their line and, and linebackers are all extremely physical and and, uh, and do a great job creating issues with either penetration or, or two gap and um, so you know it, it'll be a good challenge for us in the run game this week. Great, thank you very much for your time and good luck this coming Sunday. Thank you. Hey Ken, how would you rate where, where Josh is physically, uh, you know, heading in the playoffs with his elbow? Look, you know, he was battling it, you know, the last month or so, but yesterday was able to to throw deep you know, with accuracy. So just how would you describe where he is health wise right now? Yeah, I think he just keeps getting better and better um, with it. And I think uh, it's one of those things where he's done a great job with the maintenance and, and, um, and just continuing to uh, um, do the things that he needs to do for it to feel better and better. So uh, I really don't think there's uh, there's limitations for him right now. I think uh, he's put himself in a spot to where he can go out and, and make all the throws he wants to and, and put it where he needs to. And then you've had a lot of unsung contributions from guys like yesterday, John Brown stepped up in the practice squad and caught a touchdown. What is it about this offense that allows guys to, to maybe not have a big role, but still be able to, to make plays when they're called upon? Yeah, I think it's, it's, 
it's important for us. It's important that we we're utilizing, you know, who's ever up on game day for us and, and whoever's on our roster. It's um, you know, that's one of those things where you, you've got, you've only got so many, uh, you know, and, and you don't want your guys to wear down as the season goes on or as the game goes on. So you've got to be able to, to utilize all the guys that you have, uh, you know, active on game day and, and on your roster as, as much as possible. So uh, I think that's a, a testament to Brandon and Sean and, and the guys that they've brought in here that, um, you know, they keep bringing in guys who, who can contribute for us. And, um, you know, they're always hard decisions to make uh, throughout the week, trying to figure out who's up and, and who's down and, and those types of questions. So because of the depth that we have. So, um, you know, I think it's, it's really important for us to, to continue that and make sure we're, again, attacking people in, in, uh, in multiple different ways with our personnel as well. Hey, Ken, it's Jay with the Buffalo News. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. Um, yesterday for Gabe, uh, 10 targets, three catches. It seems like it's been a bit of a roller coaster of a, of a season for him with some really big statistical games and then maybe not what you were hoping for. I know he also you know, dealt with an injury in there as well, but what do you have to do here going into the postseason to ensure that you're getting as much consistency as possible from him from that number two receiver spot? Yeah, I think, you know, Gabe just, uh, um, he's one of those guys we got a ton of faith and we ask him to do a lot. You know, he's our, he's our guy that, that definitely moves around a lot and, and does, wears a lot of different hats for us and, and does a lot of different things. So he's a, an integral part of our offense. And I think, uh, you know, we'll, we'll continue to make sure we're focused on, on him being in the right spots uh, in order, one, for him to have success, but two, to help us to make sure we're doing the right things uh, offensively as a whole. So, you know, it's, it's a constant thing for us to make sure we're, we're putting our guys in position for them to have success. And I think Gabe's, Gabe works extremely hard at it. And, and uh, you know, I think that's something that, that we always try to strive for is just more and more consistency. And um, I think he's he's really doing a good job of, of working through things when, you know, stuff isn't always perfect. He, he works his tail off to make sure, you know, he corrects any mistakes that, that might have come up. And how about for yourself? I mean, this has been a season of firsts for you in some ways in terms of being a first time play caller. Now, when you, you know, turn the page here into the postseason and the stage gets a little bit bigger, the, you know, the spotlight gets a little bit brighter. Do you, does that impact you at all? Or do you just try to stick with what you've been doing all season? How do you approach, you know, your introduction here to the postseason, I guess? Yeah, I really think, you know, the biggest thing is we try to stick with our routine, stick with our preparation and, and, um, uh, and, and not, not really treat things much differently in, in that regard. You know, I think it's important to have consistency. I think it's important to have, um, you know, guys to be able to come in and have faith that all of a sudden you're not going to start running the wing T or something like that going into the postseason. you know, so uh, none against wing T, but <laughs> you know, hey, hey, the Dolphins might not be expecting it, right? <laughs> no. Yeah. You know, you never know. Um, yeah. No, but I think uh, obviously you're, you want to, you want to keep things fresh and make sure, you know, guys are excited about the plan and, and, you know, you have your wrinkles and things like that. But um, I, I just, I really think just consistency of approach and consistency of, of your overall attitude as a coach and, and as a player is important going into, uh, in, into this, this stretch of the postseason. Right on. Thanks, Ken. Mm -hmm. Coach Dorsey, Mookie Hawkins, Waffle Sports 1080. How you doing today, coach? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, on your second, well, actually, on your first offensive touchdown, uh, how uh, how impressed were you to see that Josh Allen showed patience uh, inside that red zone on his touchdown to Dawson Knox there? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, he really did a good job of just understanding, you know, where we were out on the field and, and uh, how to feel for the protection and everything and, and, really, and let those guys work. And um, I thought it was a great job by Dawson working for him and, and finding, finding a hole in there and uh, really being friendly. So uh, I think that's just overall just execution and offense at a high level and, and um, the protection from the, from the protection to the routes, to the decision, to the, to the throw. And I think that's offensive football for you. You know, it's, it's 11 guys operating uh, on the same page at the same time, you know, and, and if one guy breaks down right there, it could potentially throw a wrench in the whole thing. So, um, you know, that's, that's the fun part about offensive ball. And, and uh, that's, that was the exciting part for me uh, to see that throughout the game yesterday. No doubt coach and uh, in certain situations, you know, there tend to be some struggles, you know, while both of your, um, you know, your running backs are averaging over five yards of carry. 
what what comes from those struggles in short yard situations when that's happening? What are your thoughts? In in short yardage in general, or yes, yes, in short yard situations while you're both your running backs yeah. are averaging over five yards. Uh, you know, I think it's it's just one of those things where you know they they've got some good players over there too, and you know we've been we've I, I really think we've improved as the years gone on in those situations um, and continue getting uh, better and better. Um, and we just got to make sure that, you know, in, in those deals, you're, you're getting movement, you're limiting penetration. And then a lot of times it, it has to do with communication and making sure everybody's on the same page and, and uh, um, go into the right spots and, and IDs on point and uh, everybody's working in the same direction. So again, I think there's, uh, there's a lot of things that go into it when, uh, you know, when you're in those situations. And um, I think we'll continue to, to grow in terms of some of the different things we could potentially do there, um, whether it's run or pass or to keep a defense off balance. But um, you, you always like to, to be physical in those situations and, and making sure you're, you know, you're setting the tone for, for your offense as much as possible. One more if I may, Coach, it is win mm-hmm. or go home time. How do you prepare so you make sure you have every call necessary for every situation going forward? Um, I think it's just trusting the fact that, uh, you know, your guys are prepared in, in the game plan and have the ability to adjust wherever you need to adjust, you know? So, um, it's, a, it's always a balancing act of, okay, you know, do you have too much in, do you have not enough in it's, it's that right mix of, uh, making sure that, uh, that you have the right amount to where, you know, you can prepare and guys feel comfortable with it and they're not overwhelmed with it, but you have enough to attack a defense, um, and be able to pivot and adjust based off of what you're getting. So it's always the balancing act that you fight as a coach and, and putting a plan together. And um, our guys have done a great job all year handling whatever we've thrown at them. No doubt, Coach. Have a great week of practice. Good luck Sunday. Thank you. Hey, Ken, you mentioned earlier just the importance of routine and preparation, how much that can help. What was last week like for you? Obviously, everything was so different. Priorities had to be different for you guys. Just what was it like to navigate that? I mean, it's, it's, it was tough. I mean, it really was, it was an emotional week and, and guys, uh, not only players, but coaches, you know, uh, I think you go through a lot when, when you're in a situation like we were in and, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it, it really helps to, to be together. It, it helps to have, you know, uh, the family that we do within this locker room and within this building, you know, to, to kind of lean on because everybody handles those situations so much differently. And, and, um, you know, you never know when, when something in your mind might pop up, uh, you know, that, um, you know, you're not expecting and, and it, it really helps to have a, a great group of guys in a, in a locker room and, and on a coaching staff that, that you can lean on, to, um, you know, either, either help you out or talk to, or, or whatever it may be. So, um, you know, I thought that our guys did a great job, not only, you know, handling the week to prepare, but also, um, you know, being there for each other. And, and I thought that was, that was really, really great to see and, and being there for tomorrow as well. When you mentioned how it's, you know, a different timeline for everyone and the timelines changing, was there anything that, you know, either maybe you were able to do someone or someone was able to do for you that stood out as, you know, something really helpful in a week that was so difficult for everyone? I mean, I, I, I really think just, just, the, the randomness of people kind of checking in on everybody to make sure that they're doing all right. You know what I mean? It's, it's, um, you know, just kind of going outside the norm of, you know, just going in and checking in, make sure everybody's okay, whether it's a something little they notice or, or anything like that, you know? So and it could just be, you know, they're fine. It's just, you know, it's just life, <laughs> you know? So um, I, I, it was just really good to see that, um, you know, whether it was, uh, myself or you know somebody somebody else or whatever you know I thought I think that was really the the thing because a lot of times in in this profession you know it's like you just kind of bury everything inside and just go out and do your job and and that's what it is and I think uh um the realization sometimes of hey it's it's okay to to kind of talk about these things it's okay to be there for each other you know it's it was uh it was really great to see Thanks. I appreciate that. And then to quickly jump, I know mm-hmm. Naheem's big moments were on special teams, but just with him coming in midseason, having those, you know, an electric moment to start the game and then the second return, working with him every day, what was it like? He mentioned how he's trying to capitalize every opportunity and, you know, whether it's special teams offense, what was it mm-hmm. like just to see him have that day? 
I mean, it was great to see, uh, obviously, you know, one for him and then two for our team, but, um, you know, he's done a great job coming in here. Uh, uh, you know, he works so hard at it. I mean, he just, he's always studying his stuff. He's always in his book. He's always, you know, I mean, just full go working his tail off whenever he's out on the field. Um, you know, he's locked in on every meeting, every walkthrough that we do and, and on top of this stuff. So, um, you know, it's, it's really been great having him around and, and great having him on the roster and um, just really trying to make sure we're, we're continuing to grow and grow, you know, in his, in his role in all phases. Thanks. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Hi, Ken. Um, Jay asked you earlier about like for you personally going into the playoffs, how things changed for you. And I know that you said, um, you know, it's about keeping the same routine, but mm -hmm. I'm curious how much, because it's the dolphins and we've talked so much about how hard it is to play teams in your own division because of how much you guys know each other. How does that maybe change your routine to combine with it being a playoff game? Cause you guys know each other so well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think it changed the routine. It might change kind of, uh, you know, what you're trying to do in terms of attacking a defense and, and for a third time, you know, and, and uh, um, just kind of go back and, and look at some of the things that you did and, and, um, you know, try to correct some of those things with, with either scheme or uh, play call, you know, in, in a situational standpoint. So I think it really has more to do with, with that and, and just kind of uh, game planning more than kind of routine and, and schedule and, and those types of things. Awesome. Thanks, Ken. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. That's all for today. Thanks, Ken. All right. Thank you, guys.